Hey, what's up guys? It's Strategic Sam here and welcome back to another video. In my last video, I said if it gets enough support and if I got a high amount of demand, I would do a tips and tricks video. I got a decent amount of support and I got a decent amount of love from that. So here I am and we're going to be doing a tips and tricks video. So without further ado, let's get started. Now there's three things I'm going to be covering in this video. That is going to be gun tricks, melee tricks, and parkour tricks. If this video does really well, and if it gets pretty viral, I will do a prison edition. So let me know if you guys would like to see that too. But without further ado, let's get started. First thing I'm going to cover in this video is gun tricks. So pretty much, before I get started, you need to understand how the gun physics work. Pretty much when you shoot, first of all, when you shoot, you're going to have a zero slowdown right when you shoot for a split second. That's number one. Number two, you need to understand the ammo count. Ammo count for the Glock is eight shots per clip. I just shot once there. Let me go again. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and of course that eighth one. And then you're going to do the reload. And now for the tactical shotgun, it's exactly the same thing. For the tactical shotgun, it's four shots per clip. So one. And then you do your reload. Now, please keep in mind, when you reload, you're going to be standing still. So if you're trying to do a gunfight, it's best that you run away, then you do your reload. But you have to keep track of your counting of your shots. So that's the first tip. The second tip is the fact that hats, your own hats that you're wearing, your own cosmetics are hitboxes. Anything in this game, pretty much, is a hitbox and i'm going to demonstrate it here as you can see otis is wearing antlers and a duffel bag so what i'm going to do is i'm going to shoot the antlers and the duffel bag and you're still going to see them take damage watch closely the antler hitboxes are right over the head in the middle which means if you shoot in the middle they're going to take damage regardless so why is there health as i shoot the duffel bag now it still goes down and you even saw the animation so your best tip in this game is to wear at least as amount of hats as possible or wear no hats at all. The bigger and the more hats that you wear are going to make you more vulnerable. If you guys would like to determine your hat hitboxes, I'm going to leave a small tutorial at the end of this video on how to determine. So that's the first tip. The next tip I want to give is that you can actually wall shoot. But the thing about wall shooting is that it's very unsafe in certain positions. So in this position here, you can see that my arm is sticking through the wall, which means I'm hugging the fence. And this leaves me slightly vulnerable. Watch closely. As you saw there, I just got shot in the arm and I still took damage, which leaves me slightly vulnerable. But if you position your Glock or your tack slightly through the fence, not completely, you can actually make it so that you're nearly impossible to be shot or impossible entirely. You can still shoot through the fence, but it'll leave you extremely unvulnerable. As you can see, Otis is trying to shoot me, but she can't hit a shot. And the reason why is because I'm completely unvulnerable and I'm completely protected by the fence. So that's another trick. Also, pretty much anything you have or anything you hold is a hitbox. So even your tactical shotgun is literally a hitbox. And I'll even show you. So I'll literally shoot the shotgun and she'll still take damage. As you saw there, she still took damage. So what you want to do now is if you want to try to gun shoot through the fence, there's going to be rare scenarios where you're going to have to actually do this. But if you position it correctly, you can actually still do this with a tactical shotgun. But it's going to take perfect lining up and perfect timing. This won't apply to you 100% of the time, but it's very useful and very beneficial. So those are the gun tricks. And there's actually one more I want to teach you guys. So I want to teach you guys the double reload. So let's say you have to reload both of your Glock and your TAC. So I'm going to show you guys something very useful. So pretty much what you're going to do is you're going to hold your Glock out. Then once you find a safe place to reload, all you have to do is the moment that you stop moving, you hold your Glock out. Make sure you keep it held. So you hold it out. And right when you get to your safe spot, like let's say right here, you're going to click your Glock as if you're about to shoot it. And then once you click it, switch to your tack right away and then spam click your tack. Should look something like this. This is what's known as a double reload because you don't have to stand as still for as long. But you have to make sure that you're holding your Glock out first because the Glock takes longer to reload than the tactical shotgun. My next tip is basically just to inform you that three guns in this game out of the four have a slight equip delay. And that equip delay is one second. This applies with the Glock, the TAC, and the sawed off. The Uzi does not apply. The Uzi can be shot right away as the moment is picked up. And I'll prove that later in this video. But pretty much, take a look at this. So when you try to equip and you try to shoot right away, you're not going to shoot. You can see the animation of me shooting, but it's not going to shoot right away because there's a slight equip delay. 
you can just see it right there. So it's a one second equip delay for the Glock, the tactical shotgun, and the sawed off. My next trick with the sawed off is actually going to be slightly uh, different. So as I said, there's the equip delay, of course. But there's actually uh, a slight interesting feature that you should know. When you first pick up a sawed off, whether it's found or purchased from the little buyer over here, when you first have it, you're going to have five clips, as you can see on the top left. But when you first pick it up, it's only going to have two shots. Then you're going to have to do a reload because it's still uh, updated to the old sawed off. So what you want to do to fix this to have all four shots is shoot twice, then do your reload. And now when you shoot, it's going to have four shots. And then from there, it's going to have all four shots for you ready to go. And you won't have to do that one, two shot, then reload ever again, as long as you still have the same sawed off. So that's the sawed off trick. Next up, I'm going to show you the Uzi. Pretty much the Uzi doesn't really have too much of a slight feature, but it's kind of interesting. So with the Uzi, as I said earlier, you can shoot it right away, which means the moment you shoot it and the moment you equip it, you can start shooting. Watch closely. Literally, the moment you equip it, you can start shooting it. So the Uzi does not have an equip delay. Also, fun fact for the Uzi, even though it's going to be really hard to keep track, the Uzi's ammo count per clip is 14 shots. And I'll prove it to you right now. It's 14. Another interesting feature is that you can actually use the Glock or the Uzi to have a slight sprint boost. And I'm going to show you that pretty closely. The Glock is actually not as effective as the Uzi. But mostly people don't really use the Uzi, so it wouldn't really apply too much for an Uzi. But it's a still an, an interesting fact to know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stand right here at this line. And I'm going to use the sprint tactic as far as possible until I run out of stamina with both the Glock and the Uzi. And you're going to see how far of a difference is going to be. So here it is with a Glock right now. So I made it about just by this plank right here. So now let's try it with the Uzi. Now you're going to see a huge difference with the Uzi because the Uzi takes you further. So watch this. Never mind. <laughs> Turned out to be just the same. But... And in reality, if you're actually trying to sprint, the Uzi does give you a bigger B-hop. So the Uzi is pretty much the same as the Glock, but the only difference is you B-hop quicker. So those are the gun tricks. Now let's move on to melee. To understand melee, you need to understand how they work. So pretty much, I'm not going to include found melees in this video because found melees aren't really used too much by pros. They aren't really used too much in general, so I won't include found melees. But the base melees that are used are fist, pipe, knife. They turned out to be the best ones. You need to understand how they used it by the stamina. So if I swing fist and if I swing knife, it's roughly the same stamina when I normally swing it. But if I swing a pipe, it's going to be twice as more than a normal swing for the fist and the knife. What the pipe is good for is hit duration. What I mean by this is when you swing, the duration is longer compared to a fist or a knife. And I'll prove that in this video. Pretty much, sprint attacking is overused in this game. Sprint attacking is way too overused. It's very useful, but it really takes up a lot of stamina. So like right here, you can see when I use a knife and I use a sprint attack, it takes a decent amount. It takes about one third of my stamina. But if I use a pipe to sprint attack, it takes just over half. And that's quite a lot. So in order to do better, what you'll have to do is you'll have to do basic attacks instead of sprint attacks consistently. When you do a base attack, you can actually do an invisible attack with the basic attacks. And I'm going to show you that right now. Pretty much what you do is when you swing, you sprint right after you swing. And it should look a little something like this if you time it correctly. Pretty much it's very easy. You just swing, sprint right after. But make sure it's right after you swing. If it's too late, you still might not land the attack. Or the attack might run out quicker. And if you're too late, it's going to be something like this. And you're going to miss entirely. What I mean by hit duration is that the swing is longer. For the pipe, it lasts longer. The three best melees in this game are going to be fist, pipe, and knife. Found melees will not count because found melees aren't going to be in your inventory 24-7. If you time your attacks perfectly with the melees, you can actually get combos. 
What I mean by this is you have to do basic attacks though. Basically, your base attack is going to be very useful at countering both sprint attacks and normal attacks too, if you time it perfectly right. Also for the record, the vest game pass or the bullet resistant shirt, whatever it's called, does apply to melees, which means if your melee does health damage, it's going to take slightly longer and it's going to take more hits to kill your opponent because they have a vest. Vest protects red health, only your health, and that applies to both melees and guns. Quite a surprising factor. But there's actually a really good bypass, but you have to be quick. Your blue bar. Your blue bar is actually not protected by vest, which means right now, the best weapons to use to take out blue bar are going to be your fists, pipe slightly, but not too much as the fist, and crowbar. Crowbar is hardly going to be found in this game, but your best is going to be the fist. The fist mainly attacks blue bar. So right now, Odis has a vest, and I can take her out with just 4-5 to five hits with the fist. Watch closely. It only took me 4 hits to take her out, and she has a vest, which means it doesn't protect the blue bar. Pretty much any melee will take about 5-6, to six, maybe 8 hits to kill an average player. To kill a player without a vest with using a knife, it'll only take 5 hits. But with, when they have a vest, it's going to take 8. Let me demonstrate a difference. Alright, so I'm going to demonstrate another difference. With a knife, as I said, it takes about 5 hits to kill a person that doesn't have the vest. But when they do have a vest, it's going to take 8 hits. This is assuming that, they're, that you're only fighting when they're on full HP, and you're only using a melee. So when I damage Maya the Ferret with a knife, this is how much damage it deals because she doesn't have a vest. But if I damage momentarily, and she does have a vest, you can see the health difference. I did slightly more damage to my than momentarily. The next trick I'm going to cover is a couple of parkour tricks. Watch closely. So, parkour in this game is actually fairly easy, but it's actually slightly harder considering that your jump is nerfed compared to a normal game. So I'll show you guys a couple of parkour tricks. One of the best parkour tricks is the fences, because if you can actually run on the fences. But you have to time it perfectly with your jumping and your aligning. If you do it properly, you can pretty much dodge your opponent's shots. And if you time your jumps correctly, you can actually jump over the fence every single time. It takes precise timing. If you just spam it like this, you probably won't get over the fence the entire time. One of the best high grounds in this game is going to be this building right here, right in front of me. And I'm going to show you why. So, to get up here, it's actually fairly easy. You come on this dumpster, and you come over here. Make sure you're balanced perfectly on this brick right here. So what you'll do is you're going to do a Neo jump on this window. If you time it perfectly, you should climb the window. Just like that. So pretty much the reason why I say this is the best building in the game is because you have this brick right here, which will protect you from all four angles of where you're being shot from. So pretty much now, I'm going to show you a demonstration. Pretty much, let's say... If I was shooting Odis from this angle right here, she was shooting me and I was shooting her, and let's say, let's say it was a fight. Let's say I had to reload. I can pretty much just come back here and I can do the reload. And if I get shot from a different angle, I can take from this angle, I can take from this angle, and so forth. This is the best piece of cover you'll have on the top of this building. So pretty much, I can just basically shoot her from here. And if she tries to shoot me, I can come back here. And I can reposition. A second demonstration will be on this building right here. You can see Odis is on this building right here, which is very easy to get on top of because there's a tussle right here, which means you can just climb it and it'll be right on top. From this building right here, you can do one of two things. You can shoot from right here or the open areas, from here or here, doesn't really matter. Or you can literally wall shoot through this brick and you'll still land the shots on her. And it's also good because you're protected from the reload if she's still standing there. Or if anyone is still standing there. My next trick is to show you how to get on top of all the houses. It's going to be pretty easy. Not all of the houses are going to be beneficial to get on top of. But a good amount of them will be. The most basic one is this one right here by the sandbox. You go over here. Jump on the fence. Go on top of the shed. And then sprint on the roof. As the most basic one. Next is this house right here. This house is fairly easy to get on top of. There's two ways to get on top of it. One, you can use the door. Or two, you can use the Neo jump from the window. But I find personally the door more beneficial and more easy. Let me show you how to do it. Pretty much you stand here, you have to make sure the door is closed. And then open it, and as it's opening with the animation, just jump. And then once you jump, you come up here. You basically just climb up, and there you go, you're on top of the house. Let me show you what that looks like again in slow-mo. <laughs> So 
So that's how to get on top of this house. The same of this house applies to this house right here too. This house is fairly easy to get on top of. There's two ways to do it. But this one, the first way I'm going to show you is more beneficial. You come over here, you go on the top of this couch, you go on the little pole right here, and then you go on the top right here. And then there you go, you go be on the top of the house. Now this house right here, the white one that's next to the sandbox, is a little bit more advanced, but you'll have very good high ground over a lot of opponents if you get manage to get yourself on top of this one. Let me show you how to do it. So first off, it's actually a small process. So pretty much you can do it one of two ways. You can use the door and jump up when it's opening. And then you can go up here. And then you have to do a neo jump from here all the way to the roof. So how you do that is just like this. Or you could do it another way. You could go over here, jump on the fence, jump on the open door, and then do the neo jump on top of the house. And then you'll have high ground over a lot of opponents. And it's also in the open, which means a lot of people are in this area. So that's how to get on top of all three types of houses. Let me show you the back alley tricks that I have. One back alley trick I have over here is when you go through this fence right here in between this little hole, you can come on top of this propane tank and you can make your way on top of the red house right here. You could do it one of two ways. You can go on top of the propane tank. You can go on top of the fence. If I can even get it. And you can come on top of the roof. You'll also have an advantage because you can be on top of this red brick wall right here. Which will lead you on top of this building too. Another useful back alley trick is this tree right here. It's actually pretty easy to get inside of it. So, you can go on top of this building right here by using the tussle or you can use the crate. And I'll show you how to use the crate in just a second. And then when you're going inside the tree, you have to aim your jump perfectly on this branch right here. You're going to see it. Uh, it's right there. And the branch is pretty much right where my cursor is. So if you jump right here, you'll land inside of it. And you'll have a perspective over everyone else, which means you can shoot out, but they can't shoot in. It's a very good reload spot. To get on top using the crate, it's very easy. You just go, uh, come on top of this part right here, just jump up, and then once you reach this part, just sprint on top. And for my last parkour trick on the uh, bank side is going to be this very underrated area. A lot of people don't really come here, but this area is very beneficial in a pretty decent amount of ways. Usually many people don't really come here because people are mostly by the sandbox, but this is a very useful way to get easy high ground. So basically, this little shed right here, pretty much, you can have to just climb this little part right here that's next to the window. And you can come on top of the roof and you have easy high ground. And you can do one of three things. You can stay on this roof. You can go inside this tree. Or you can go on this brick. Or you can go on top of this tree, make your way up. And then go on top of this roof right here, which is easy high ground over your opponent. Now keep in mind, not many people come here, but if you're being chased or something and you want easy high ground, this is the way to do it. Now let's go to the prison side of the map and let me show you a few tricks that we can do there. All right, so now we're at the prison side. Pretty much the best way and the most beneficial for the prison side is actually going to be this kicking chicken place right here. So pretty much the best way to get high ground is to go on top of this dumpster, go on top of this little vent, or you can just jump on top of the roof like so. And that's easy high ground. And from here, you could do a variety of things. You can just be creative with your play style. You can be up here. You could be over here. Or you can come on this wall right here. You can go up here. You can go over here. You can go on this house right here. Or you can go on top of this building. Or you can go on this little wall right here. And then you can jump on top of this building right here. There's a lot of things you can do on this area. You just have to be creative with your play style. But everything else pretty much remains the same. There's actually a way to get on top of McFrothy's, but this is only going to be if the quarantine map is still going to be in effect for the game. Let me show you how to do it. It's pretty easy. So this fence right here, if you time and you line up your jumps perfectly, it should look a little something like this. And then you're on top of the roof. There is actually no other way to get on top of this roof other than that method. You can't even use the dumpster right here. And you can't even jump on top because that's too high. Assuming that the quarantine map still stays and all the decorations for the quarantine map stays in the map. Then this is the only way to get on top of McFrothy's. Alright guys, let me show you a little bit of a bonus method that you can use for this game. If you want to do intense wall shooting, and wall shooting that pretty much is going to be sounding like you're cheating literally, or looks like it literally makes you look like you're cheating, this is the way to do it. 
So you want to come to your settings right here, go to settings, go to camera mode, and set it to camera toggle. Once you set it to camera toggle, it should look a little bit something like this. Pretty much what you do is make sure you're out of shift lock, right click, and if you do it right, your perspective will look something like this. You can do this with pretty much any building and any big building that you have. And if you do it properly, this is what it should look like if you do it inside of a big building. Pretty much what you can do with this is you can pretty much wall shoot from any angle, assuming that your camera perspective is facing to the left of your character. You cannot do this if you're on the right. It won't work for the right. It will only work from the left side of your character. So if you're trying to shoot, this is what it's going to look like. You cannot do this from the right, as I said, only from the left. Let's say you don't want to use camera toggle and you want to do a little bit of wall shooting. Well, there's actually a slight method, but it's not going to be as effective as camera toggle. You can do it like this. Make sure you have shift lock on. Go next to a wall. Put your camera perspective while you're using shift lock inside the wall. Zoom in close enough in your character. And you can actually shoot them while they're on pretty much like an edge of the uh, building. And it should look a little bit something like this. Something in this game that is very useful is the cars. Pretty much you can do a pretty decent amount of things using the cars in this game. Even though they break a lot and they're very glitchy, they're actually very useful. So let me show you one way. So let's say you have to reload your guns, but you don't want to take damage and you don't have much stamina to run away. So what you can do is, let's say you have a car next to you. You could do something like this. Hold out the gun that you have to reload at least a second before you're about to use it for the reload. Go by the car and then either walk over the front window or the back window. And if you time it perfectly, you can actually walk over the window and into the seat, which makes it so that you can't be shot in the car because in the car you cannot be shot. And it should look a little bit something like this if you time it properly. Here's another example. Let's say I'm in the car, but Otis tries to shoot me. As you can see, she can't shoot me because the car prevents me from being shot. Even though it doesn't look like that there's a window on this part of the of the car, it still won't make the shot go through the car, and it will pr protect me entirely. Alright guys, so during the video I said I would show you how to determine your hat hitboxes for the streets. So, it's a very simple process. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to go to one of your games that you have, make sure that you have the Coles admin in your game implemented. Once you do that, uh, you can get started with this right away. Pretty much all you gotta do is run a simple, a few simple commands. Right now I have about three avatar outfits that I can show you the hitboxes for, and as well as the one I'm currently wearing. So this is how you do it. Follow me step by step. So first off, you're gonna want to gear yourself the F3X building block. Once you do that, you, you should have something like this in your inventory. All right. Now, you're going to run a series of commands. You're going to do this. Run unlock. Hide name. And clone. So once you do that, this is what it should look like when you spawn your character. Now I'm going to show you guys the uh, hitboxes for all four actually. I'm going to be showing you guys the hitboxes for all four of these characters. So look closely. These first three are all with ten hats. Meaning they pretty much are maxed out on accessories. Pretty much how to determine is very simple. All these squares, all these rectangles that you see on the character are all hitboxes. So if you get shot with any gun in the streets in any of these boxes, you'll pretty much take damage. So that's with the first outfit. And here's how it is with the second outfit. This one is a little bit more deadly considering the RPG has a bigger hitbox. This goes for the third outfit. And finally, this is an outfit I would recommend wearing for the streets if you ever play pro or if you're ever trying to face competitive. This is the type of outfit you should wear. Of course, I just wear the crown because it's silly and it f suits me really well, but you don't have to. But this is what it would look like if I wore this. These are my hitboxes, pretty much. So all four of these together, you can clearly see that the hitboxes are pretty big, especially with these first three outfits.
Alright guys, so that pretty much wraps up my tips and tricks video. I really do hope that you guys found this beneficial in any type of way. If you guys did enjoy it, please feel free to leave a like down below. And comment down below if this was beneficial to you by any possible means. If this video gets enough support, I actually may do a prison edition for this type of video. And yeah. And also, if you're new to the channel, feel free to hit that subscribe button and with post notifications on. I once in a while upload the streets every now and then whenever there is a good video idea that I have. But yeah guys, that pretty much wraps up this tips and tricks video. I really do hope you enjoyed, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. Catch you guys around.